Hey everybody, welcome back to Canadian DIY. I appreciate you coming back. So in this video, we're continuing on with our shed build. Specifically, we're gonna be building our roof. Now, quick little, quick little tidbit here. This video is not how to actually apply whatever roofing material you want. It is, however, going to be how to build and assemble your structure. Now the reason I'm not gonna go over how to do your roofing material, I ended up shingling mine. But whether you go with a shingle roof, a steel roof, or just like a rollout asphalt, uh, that's entirely up to you. But that would require an entire dedicated video unto itself. And if you guys have been following along, I kind of had a snowstorm bearing down on me while I was building this guy. So I never actually got to film any type of roofing on this video. That's just the way it is. I literally finished it up while it was starting to sleet and spit on us. So I ran out of time. I'm sorry, I apologize. The important part is, we're gonna build the structure. So in today's video, that's what we're doing. So let's get at it. All right, so the first thing we gotta do before we add any roofing material, we have to add our top plates to our walls. Now that is nothing more than just another two by four that sits on top of the existing plate that's already there. Then just go ahead and attach them with some two and a half inch screws every couple feet or so. But the second top plate does give us a chance to tie our corners of the walls together one more time. So I like to overhang my side walls over top of the back wall first with a triangle of screws in the corner like this. And that really helps just lock that extra corner together with some triangulation. Then the back and the front wall literally just set in place. Now we're going to move on to what is probably the most confusing part to a lot of people and that's the angle for our roof trusses. Now I'm going to use the same method I use for my firewood shed. It's super simple. So at the back of my shed flush with the bottom of my sheeting I added a screw. I know that my back wall is six and a half feet tall and my front wall is eight feet tall. So at the front of the shed I can measure up from the bottom of the sheeting a foot and a half because that's the difference between my front and back wall and add another screw. Then using a two by four by 10, I can rest it in place on top of the screws. This is one of the boards that's eventually going to be a truss anyway. But then I can take a scrap board that I actually cut off from my wall studs earlier on and hold it on top of there and then flush with the front of the wall, mark a line. Now that line is the exact angle for all of the trusses that I'm going to need, the fronts, the backs, everything. So once you cut this out, mark it as a template so you don't throw it away. And then the last thing I did on my two by four by 10 while it was still sitting on the screws at the shed was I marked eight inches of overhang on the front and the rear. Now that's a number I just pulled out of thin air again. It looked good to me, but that just gives me a point where I can start my cuts using my template. Now the last thing you also have to do is make sure that you're starting your cuts on the front and the back in the correct orientation. Uh, you do have to flip the template over side to side to make sure that it's going to be correct, but it does help to sort of visualize it and hold it in place. Make sure you're marking your cuts at the correct angles. You want it so when the truss is in place, your cuts on the front and back are going to end up vertically. Once you have one truss cut out though, the rest is really simple because it's literally just rinse and repeat. You can hold it on top of the other ones, mark them all, and then cut everything to length. It goes really quick after that. With our truss set in place, you can see my mark underneath. That's my eight inches of overhang, so I'm good there. You can also see that because now the truss is sitting at an angle like it's supposed to, our front cut is perfectly vertical, which is exactly what we want. That means our cut was perfect. To fasten it down, I'm literally just using a couple of three inch screws toe nailed into our top plate on the front and the rear of the truss. Now, one thing you really wanna pay attention to again, just like our floor is to crown the boards. Stare down them and make sure the hump is facing up. We want them all up because this is going to be carrying weight. You'll also notice that this is why you have a double top plate because our back wall and our front wall, even though there's 16 inches on center, we took the measurements from different points. So our trusses don't land in between our studs. So the double wall plate actually carries the load from the roof truss, spreads it out across, and then it hits the wall studs and then goes down into the floor. Now the rest of the trusses, I'm literally just fastening with two screws on one side and then one screw on the other side, kind of making a triangle between the three of them. And on the back wall, it makes it really easy. Our roof trusses are landing directly over our wall studs. On the front wall, I'm just measuring them as we went, just 16 inches on center. Now with all of our trusses in place, we can finally cut our sheeting material to the exact height that we need. So 
just using a chalk line on the front of the truss and the back of the truss, snap it, and that's the angle we need. How you choose to cut this out, however, is entirely up to you. Don't go outside of your comfort zone on this one. I'm using a circular saw because it's quick and easy for me, but if you don't feel comfortable with that, go ahead and use a sawzall that we used before that also works awesome, and it's far less sketchy if you're not used to a circular saw. We still have one tiny problem though, and if you'll notice, the front and the back side of the truss as well don't have any sheeting material on them, but it's actually a really simple problem to solve because these pieces that we're cutting off right now already have the correct angles and it literally is as simple as taking them, holding them in place, cutting them to length and attaching them with a couple of just short screws. Once you've got the front and the back sheeting material on our trusses, they're all capped off, you can literally take them and finish attaching our wall sheeting to the trusses all the way up. It's time to tie all of our trusses together with our subfascia board. Now, the one goes on the front, one goes on the back side of the shed. Now, it's nothing more than just a 2x4x10 that we're going to face screw into all of our trusses. Two 3-inch screws into each 2x4. Now, if you'll notice, the overall construction of our roof is almost identical to our floor, you guys. So if you can build the floor, you can build the roof. It's pretty simple. That's why I like this design, because there's only the one angle you got to work with, and the whole thing is stick-built together. There's no giant sections you got to try and manhandle up onto the shed. The hardest part? Getting the OSB up there. But even that's not that difficult. Now, this is nothing more than the exact same half-inch OSB we've been using for our walls up until now, except the only difference being from the floor, I'm laying it lengthways front to back, as opposed to side to side like we did the floor, and this is going to make sure that it shares that center truss with the entire length of the sheet. So I literally laid one up, laid another one up right beside it, and then the last one, rip it in half because we have two extra feet, and then the other two feet can go along the back side of the shed, and before you know it, the whole shed is sheeted. Now we can work on the actual cosmetic fascia boards for this shed. Now I'm using a 5 quarter by 6 by 12 foot deck board here. And my dad and I each have a scrap piece of deck board in our hands and that lets us mark the exact length that we need for the front fascia board as well as the back fascia board. So cut two of those out and then attach them to the front and rear. I'm also using a scrap piece of board on the side and that will actually stop it from moving left to right telling me that we're in the exact same location we were before so we can attach this guy with some treated two and a half inch screws, a couple on each joist length. Now, I hope you haven't thrown away your template either for our roof trusses because it's actually the same angles we're obviously going to need for our side fascia boards. So once you have the angle of that marked out and the length cut, again, same thing using some treated screws, go ahead and fasten each side fascia board into place. With our fascia boards up, now we can start on our soffit. Now I'm just using the, again, the exact same half inch OSB. Once I took my measurement, I ripped it to width and then I made sure to cut it to length so that way it landed on half of one of my roof trusses. And again, this is just so that this board can catch half the truss, the next board can catch half the truss, so that way everything is screwed down into wood, all the ends are secured. But before you go ahead and put them up, make sure to mark a line on the front of the shed where all your trusses are, so that way you know exactly where your screws are going to go and you're not playing hide and go seek with the trusses. <laughs> Using our ever-growing pile of scraps over here of 2x4 cutoffs, we need to address the gap between our roof truss and our side walls. Now, again, because we have a double top plate, these don't have to land exactly perfectly over top of a stud. It's good practice, but they don't have to because we have the double plate. But it's literally as simple as holding it in place and mark the point of where the front of the truss and the back of the truss line up with the sideboard. And then using your roofing template again, connect the dots to make your angle, and then slide it in place. This doesn't have to be held in any crazy amount of strength. It's literally just a support brace, so just a couple of toenail screws is fine. All right, our roof is up, it's built. Now last thing we gotta do, we're gonna reinforce it a little bit. Now, if you guys have tied your shed to the ground. If you had to drill anchors and posts and stuff like that and actually fasten this guy to the ground, you live in a hurricane area, you may need these on every single truss. And these are hurricane ties. So they have five holes in the top, five holes in the bottom. If you notice, they got a twist to them. Now these are designed to tie your wall plates into your roof trusses. And they basically just go on simply like this. Once you attach all your screws to it, it's a structural fastener. In my case, my shed's floating. I don't necessarily need them, but once I have the entire shed loaded with things, the shed will be heavy, 
but it can still be the odd wind that comes by super strong and it may want to start picking the roof up. So these just give me a little bit of added insurance. Now again, I don't necessarily need them on every single one. It's just a shed, not a house or a giant structure or something like that. So what I decided to do was my outside walls are already tied into my sheeting material and my wall. So my trusses on the outside are pretty well fastened down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip one, add one, as you can see, skip, I'm going to add one here, skip one, add one. And I'm going to do the exact same thing along the front. One thing you want to make sure though, is if you put one on the back side of this truss, you also want to put one on the front side of this truss. You want to make sure you put these on the same trusses. So I'm putting just three along the back and three along the front. And that'll be plenty of holding power for this guy. Well, you guys, and that is it. We got another project down. The shed is coming together. Doors done, walls done, floors done, roofs on. All we got left to do now is trim this guy and paint it. So we're gonna do that in the next video. If you guys haven't seen the other videos in the series, go check them out. I'll have them linked down below. I'll also have links to some of the stuff I use, but otherwise, thanks very much for stopping by, you guys. I really appreciate it. If you guys like this video, thumbs up and a comment down below. If you guys are building this thing following along, that's even cooler. Hit me up, send me some pictures. I'd love to see them. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for stopping by.